Country living is not for everyone, but for him, it is quite convincing. Why did you decide to live in the mountain? Uh, because I like it up here. There's, compared to living in a city, it's quiet, it's restful, you can think about a lot of very important things. Uh, you don't have any noise, I have no neighbors that you can see. I have a neighbor probably 500 yards up that way and a neighbor about... Uh, it's probably a thousand, probably a, well maybe almost a kilometer that direction. I really like it here, and I figured rather than uh, living somewhere I didn't want to be or didn't enjoy, I'd rather live here. So we moved here and uh, built a house, and now I spend. I used to have an office in a little village about three miles from here, but I realized that you know my work is international, and nobody comes to my office. I do it all over the internet, so I don't need an office in a village. So I moved my office here to home, and now I do all my work over the internet, except when I have to travel. I do a lot of national and international travel to see my clients. What I'm doing now is, it's early September, I'm getting ready for winter. And uh, if you look down there, you'll see a woodshed full of wood. The wood that's not in the shed outside there is the wood that I gathered yesterday. And I'm going to have to chop it up in a week or two, and that's great exercise. His great status as an attorney would not stop him to engage in all aspects of country living, including fixing many things with his own hands. Now let's see if I can shave with it. Uh, not quite, but close. Close enough. Now I'm going to go test it and see how good it really is on, on the wood. The reason I came here was to put an edge on that so see if I can't chop the wood a little bit better than what I had been doing. Gosh, uh, lot working great. Yeah, that's the way it ought to be. Most of the time it would split like that. Very tough. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'll put the whole thing in. A little big, but it'll fit. Did you give up already? On that one, I give up. <laughs> Considering severe winter approaching shortly in this area, he is fully prepared to face the extreme weather. He shares a beautiful life with his new wife, <laughs> who also shares the same faith, vision, and enthusiasm about country living. He built this beautiful home with his former Christian wife as they thought they would live the rest of their lives here together. Yet being from two different faiths was about to present a challenge for both, something they had not anticipated. Yeah, the, the question is, what's the difference between Christianity and Islam? And it boils down primarily to uh, the oneness of God versus the Trinitarian approach. Uh, in addition, of course, Islam has a lot of, it, it has the Quran uh, as the last revelation of, of God. Uh, and it provides instruction, guidance, and those sorts of things. But Islam is really an extension of both Judaism and, and Christianity, except that it, it got back on the, on the uh, Unitarian nature of 
of God, the oneness of God. God has no partners. God has no equals. Uh, when the after the Christians went off onto that tangent, four centuries after Jesus died, uh, it's important to remember that the early Christians didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. It was debated. Uh, if you read the Bible pretty carefully, he said uh, he is the Son of Man, not the Son of God. At least many references in the Bible. Uh, but but later theologians took the idea and uh, and made him into the son, son of God. Other differences include organizational structure. Many churches, uh, certainly the Catholic Church and even a lot of Protestant church, churches have a very hierarchical structure, uh, whereas Islam uh, generally doesn't. I think my situation pretty well demonstrates that when people have fairly strongly held religious ideals and preferences, uh, it's difficult if they are of different faiths, particularly. Uh, it, it makes just daily living uh, difficult for them to get along with one another because of the various uh, demands of the religion, rituals of the religion, uh, and uh, therefore I think that you know it makes a lot of sense for Christian to marry Christian, particularly and then the Catholic to marry a Catholic, Protestant to marry a Protestant, if they both feel strongly about it. Now there are many situations where one party feels stronger about it than the other, and the other doesn't care so much. Uh, those are the situations that you know they will last. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it, it's it's good if uh, if people have uh, oh, congruity, I suppose would be the word, uh, in their religious beliefs, so that they uh, so that they have the same understandings of the faith, same understandings of what their personal relationship to God is, and um, it just makes life a lot easier. It avoids, avoids a lot of stress. How your life has changed since you married? Well, it's just a lot more. My, my you know, Islam, to practice it properly, uh, has the five pillars, and it requires fasting. It requires uh, five daily prayers, for example. And those, those can be uh, both of those can be elements of contention uh, with a person who doesn't uh, accept those as part of a religious life. Uh, it can be, in some ways, inconvenient for them, uh, and it's. So, so it just leads to frustration and anger. And there was a lot of frustration and anger in, in our marriage, my prior marriage. I, when I met Lolly and got to know her, I had enormous respect for her. Uh, I learned about who she was, what she did, how she felt, what she believed, those kinds of things. And so in the Muslim tradition, uh, I suggested to Lolly that we get married, and she thought about it and decided it wouldn't be a terribly bad idea. I don't know if she thought it would be good idea, but it wouldn't be a terribly bad idea. And so we were married at the Masjid Asaf in October of 2008. And it's been uh, very wonderful since then. This new marriage not only brings tranquility and peace to Tom, it may also be a great addition to his ultimate decision after years of search and dilemmas. Let us see how it all began. Well, it actually began, there it is, when I lived in Iran, I became fairly familiar with, and then about, well, I would guess 15, uh, maybe closer to 20 years ago, I became more interested in religion in general, partly because my father-in-law was a Christian Lutheran pastor, and I had never, I, I would, let me, more background on that, go further back. I was, my father was what they call a Unitarian. And a Unitarian is a group that when the church in, at the Council of Nicaea in the fourth century, that long ago, uh, 1700 years ago, uh, decided in a vote that Jesus was the Son of God, and since then that became the Trinitarian side of the uh, church, the dominant side of the church, uh, the Unitarians dissented and said, no, he's not. Uh, and the Unitarians have existed since then in various forms, and in the United States still do. As a matter of fact, they are, they're very liberal in their outlook. Uh, 
the, the Unitarian Church is now involved in what's called the Unitarian Universalist Church, and I went to that for a number of years in Oregon City, close by here. And I was actually on the board of trustees. And, and uh, But the Unitarian Church doesn't... Uh, is not very rigorous. It's not not very. You know, it, it accommodates all, which is wonderful. It's it's an open church, but it you know if you want to be an atheist or a Buddhist or a or a or a goth or anything, you're welcome in the Unitarian Church. And I got thinking, well, the fact that it, it's nice that there is a place one can go to to practice or to get to know to talk about religion. It just was not sufficiently didn't have enough content for me. And so I started looking for something with more content, and that's when I realized that I knew a lot about Islam because of my stay in Iran, my four years over there, when I was in the Peace Corps. And uh, I started reading the Quran, partly in response to the, the, the pressure from my father-in-law to become serious about Christianity, tr Trinitarianism. And so I, he, he's actually the person who raised the issue, and I uh, ultimately ended up reading the Quran very carefully, uh, and I, it, it just, it, 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 it hit, hit, hit me as uh, true and something I should pursue, and so I have, and I did. And uh, as I say, the rest is history. I, uh, I been practicing for about 15 years, perhaps longer. It's not, you know, it's hard, to, you, you can tell when you did your shahada, uh, but, you know, it's really what's in the heart that determines when you're a Muslim. Uh, it it isn't, isn't necessarily saying something in front of a crowd that makes you a Muslim, it's, it's the internal statement. And I, that was at least 15 years ago. And so that's how I happened to become a Muslim. And then uh, I got to know a number of people in Portland who, uh, Muslims, and talk to them about it, and I became more and more active. Uh, but it wasn't much of a much of an issue for a long time until after until really 9/11 happened. One of the things becoming a Muslim did is it led me to uh, have a greater interest in Palestinian issues, mm. and I became very active in in, in the Palestinian cause. And uh, as a matter of fact, I when I formed my own law firm in Portland, my first the first person I hired was a Muslim woman from a Palestinian Muslim woman, born in the United States, uh, who had just graduated from uh, law school at Berkeley, Berkeley uh, University of California, Berkeley, and so she's the one that got me terribly interested in in the uh, issues involved in uh, Palestine. Since then, uh, the real the next thing that happened that was before 9/11. And before 9-11, I went over to uh, Palestine a number of times and, and uh, saw the situation there and became pretty much of a Palestinian, a pro-Palestinian. And so I then got a lot of requests from a lot of people I hadn't known before who wanted uh, to know legally what Muslims should do when faced with issues like when the FBI knocks on your door, how do you deal with them? And so I started consulting and counseling those people, all on a pro bono, meaning free basis, yes. telling them what they should do, what they shouldn't do. Uh, I really became active in the government's, quote, war on terror, which is really, in my opinion, a war on Islam. Uh, in 2004, when a, when a local Oregon attorney, Portland attorney, by the name of Brandon Mayfield, who himself was a Muslim, and whom I had known for a number of years, I'd counseled him on becoming a lawyer, because I was, I was about 20 years senior to him, uh, got arrested uh, for being involved in the Spanish train bombing of, what was it, spring of 2004, I'm not sure what month. The uh, upshot of that was the FBI had, after totally claiming to the world uh, that Mr. Mayfield was guilty, guilty, guilty. The Spanish authorities proved conclusively that the link between the bombing and Mr. Mayfield was fabricated and, and wrong. It was a false reading of a fingerprint, and Mr. Mayfield was freed. Well, during the course of my representation of Mr. Mayfield, 
I got some national notoriety, the, the national press turned to me uh, to respond to questions they had about Mr. Mayfield because I was, I had been his criminal attorney and I still am to some one degree or another his civil attorney. So I accommodated them and responded and got on the national networks, Keith Olbermann and they, you know, all the, the usual suspects, liberal media. And at that point, a uh, number, several attorneys in Washington, D.C. saw me talking about defending Muslims in Oregon, and they had a problem with the government in, the, in relation to al Haramain Islamic Foundation, mm -hmm. which was a, a charity down in southern Oregon that had been raided and uh, ultimately designated uh, by the U.S. government, and uh, two, two of its uh, directors indicted and I got involved in that case, and that's where it really began. So it's been kind of an evolving story. Paul LaRudy has announced here, a friend of mine who works on Palestinian matters, is going to get and fly a plane into Gaza to deliver humanitarian supplies instead of trying to go by boat. How do you feel about that? I'm in favor of it. I just don't think I want to be on the plane. <laughs> it's going to be dangerous.